Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate the good rain and every blessing from the Lord. I appreciate the fact that you're here in God's house today, and I hope that we can be a blessing to you here as well as you out in the radio listening audience. Now, you out in the radio listening audience, if you'll get on your phone and call a friend and have them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour, you will be a blessing to them. We have a lot of people in hospitals and various other places that listen. One of our own members, Sister Helen Aiken, in the hospital said she'd be listening today. And many others that's sick and disabled to be in God's house will be listening to this hour. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 12 and Philippians chapter 4. Luke chapter 12, page 1092, and then turn to Philippians chapter 4. I'm speaking today on this subject, why worry, worry what? So I hope the message will help you. And before I read my scripture today, I want to mention the fact that you're not getting our daily broadcast. If you tune into this station where you're now listening, you can get the broadcast each day at 12 o'clock noon. And then you can write in and get our cassette tape. I'd be glad to send you a list of about 186 here we have listed. And we'll send you the list or we'll send you any number or title you write for. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. Now this is a faith ministry. It's not easy to stay on there by faith doing these uh, summer days, a lot of people on vacation, various other things happening. So I want you to pray for me. If the broadcast is a blessing to you, then let me know about it and stand by this home mission work. We have thousands listening on Sunday, many shut-ins, people even in prisons and various other places, hospitals, and the broadcast is a blessing. It's a real home mission work. It's not a fly-by-night ministry. We've been on there almost 37 years daily. We'll be the end of next month, the Lord willing. And so you see it's not a fly-by-night ministry, a real home mission work that God has opened the door for us. And I appreciate it. I appreciate the ones that God has spoken to to work with us in getting out the gospel. At the judgment seat of Christ, we'll stand there and be rewarded together for all the good that's been done through this home mission work. You can also request... Uh, brochure for our Holy Land tour of next year. Take a look at it. We plan to go to Israel and Rome, the Lord willing. Now's the time to get your name on the list. Some of you may be a little afraid because of the last hijacking of the American plane. I think the airways are safer now than ever before. They've really tightened up on security, and I'm not worried about that. I think it's safer right now than it was before that hijacking. So don't worry about that. If you want to go to the Holy Land I think it would be a wonderful trip, and I believe God will see us safely there and back. You write in and get the brochure, and remember my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now with your Bible open at Luke chapter 12, I begin reading with verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking a thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like unto one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe ye, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye that which ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. All these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth what ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so that's as far as I'm reading. 
There I want to read in another place in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 13. It's page 1260. Philippians chapter 4, uh, uh, 12, page 1260. So you turn then your Bible, verses 10 through 13, I shall read. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. I know how to abound in every way in all things. I, I instruct you both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now I want you to let those verses sink in. Now the devil today is using a lot of high pressure method on people. He, he's putting on the pressure because he knows the time is short. He knows it won't be long, his day will be over. And he wants to do all he can to get people to worry and fret and become despondent, discouraged and perplexed. Now worry is the rust on the blade. If you've ever had an instrument that you used to cut with and then it get rusty, that's like worrying on your mind. God never intended for his people to worry. Be concerned, yes. Think about things, yes, but not to worry about them. Now as I bring this message, I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm preaching to you as one that never worry. We all worry at times about certain things. I try not to worry. I'm asking God to help me not to worry about things as we sojourn. But God doesn't want his people to worry. I have worried about things and you have too. But that doesn't please the Lord. I'm going to tell you why as we move along in the message. There was a dear old woman one time. She was 94 years old. Her husband was 96 years old. They had one son named Willie who was 72 years old. One night Willie took a bad cold and he never married, always lived with his parents. And his mother went in and doctored him real good and, and did what she could to help him make him comfortable. She went back and got in the bed with her husband, but she didn't go to sleep. She rolled and she tossed and she worried. And her husband said, what in the world is wrong with you? She said, I'm afraid that we'll never be able to raise poor Willie. Now, a lot of times people worry about things that's not worth a flip to worry about. And you need to realize that because if Satan can get you to worry, then he has you defeated. Now, worry, worry is absolutely needless. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 24, consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more ye better than the fowls? If God takes care of the ravens, the little birds in the air, the Bible says God loves you and more concerned about you than it would be those little fowls. He takes care of them. Worry is the advanced interest you pay on trouble that seldom ever comes. Now you need to realize that. A lot of people worry about things that never come to pass. Worry about things that never come. And that's interest you're paying on something that's needless, something you should not worry about. Now, secondly, worry is hopeless. We find in Luke chapter 12, verses 25 and 26, And which of you with taking a thought can add to his stature one cubit? If you then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Now we need to realize that worry is hopeless. Many things you worry about you can absolutely do nothing about. You need to realize that you worry about something that the devil disturbs you about and nothing you can really do about it. Some years ago in one of my former pastors during one of the wars, there's a dear lady had a son that uh, I knew, I knew the son uh, would not be drafted into the army because of his uh, mental condition. But his poor mother came to me time and time again, almost after every service, burdened to death, worrying herself, almost in their frenzy because she just knew they were going to draft her son into the army and he would be sent to the battlefront and be killed. And her son would tell her, he would say, Mama, if I have to go into the army, I'll never come back. And she'd cry and worry about that, but I knew the boy would never pass the board. He would not be able to get in. I realized that, but I couldn't tell her. And she'd even call me during the day and sometimes during the night, so worried about her son. 
She's so afraid that he might be drafted into the army and there be killed. Well, of course, uh, whenever they sit him down for his examination, they turn him down immediately. Now that poor woman was worrying about something that would never come to pass. I could have very easily told her that he wouldn't make it, that he'd be a 4F, uh, but I just didn't want to tell her that. But uh, she worried me and she worried herself about that very thing. Uh, she aggravated me, I might say. And she had called me and talked to me almost every service she'd attend. She'd hold me up at the door, hold the people up the door, trying to tell me that she's so afraid that that boy's going to be drafted into service. See, she was worrying about nothing, losing sleep about something that would never happen. And that's the way it is with people that worry many times. Now, a lot of people, if they get a little headache, or if they get a little gas on their stomach or a little something wrong, or get a little cold, they take off to the doctor's office. Maybe you should go, maybe you should not go. A lot of people trot to the doctor when there's no need of going to the doctor. A lot of people trot to the, uh, the drugstore when there's no need of going to the drugstore. If you'd quit that worrying, you'd cut out some of that suffering. There's a woman one time, she went to the doctor about every day or so, and finally uh, she died and the doctor died. And it so happened that they buried them side by side. After a few years, the story goes, she started knocking on his coffin. He said, what do you want now? She said, do you have anything for worms? And there they were. She was worrying again about something. Now, we need to realize that worry is useless many times. And you worry yourself sick. You'll damage your health. Many times, it'll affect your heart, your, your blood pressure, and uh, your eyes or some part of your body just because you worry, worry, worry. One of the greatest victories that you could ever accomplish is to get away from that worrying. It's faithless. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 28, If then God has so, so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, worrying is not trusting. The less faith we have, the more we worry. The more we trust God's word, the less we worry. Now, worry is like a rocking chair. You will do something, but it gets you nowhere. You worry, worry, worry. You can sit down in a rocking chair and you can rock all day long and still be in the same spot when night comes. Now you can worry from sun up to sundown and accomplish absolutely nothing because of your worrying. Now it's damaging your health. A lot of people go to a premature day, a grave because of worry. A lot of people or in ill health today because they worry. Now the Bible tells us not to worry. Now God plainly said in this book, there's no point in worrying. That's needless. It's a lack of faith. It's something you've been tricked into by the devil. The devil wants you to worry and grieve and worry day in and day out. And if you do that, you'll soon be in ill health or be in the cemetery. Worry is useless. In Luke chapter 12, verses 29 and 30, the Bible says, Seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. All these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. So most people worry about things that never come to pass. There's a man and woman one time taking a trip, going to cross over the river to see some of the family. And they knew the old bridge is about ready to fall in. And they had heard the bridge had fallen in. But they wanted to see their children. And they started on the way. And oh, how they worried. And how they talked about that bridge. I just know the bridge has fallen in. I just know we'll not be able to see our children today. But you know, when they arrived at the river, you know what had happened? There was a brand new bridge built there. Now they worried all that time about nothing. Now that's the way of some of you worry. You worry about nothing. Some of you worry about afraid you're going to have cancer. Some of you worry you're afraid you're going to have a heart attack. You worry about high blood pressure. You worry about whether or not you're going to be able to hold your job. You worry about how you're going to provide for your family. And you just worry, 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 and it's not worth a dime with a hole in it. You're worrying about nothing. That is, there's nothing you can do about these things. It's absolutely useless. Blessed is a man that is too busy to worry in the daytime and too sleepy to worry at night. So just stop that worrying. 
People worry themselves sick. They trot to see the doctor and he knows what's wrong with them. It's in their mind and they word themselves uh, in that condition and the doctor knows that. He might not tell them but he knows that and, and so he knows not too much he can do about it. But he'll go ahead and give them something because if he didn't they'd say well he's a sorry doctor. I went to see him and he didn't give me a pill one. Didn't give me any medicine. Didn't tell me to go to the drugstore. I'm not going back to him. I'll get me another doctor. Well, he knew that your trouble was worry. You just worry, worry, worry. Nothing he could give you to help you. But he had to give you a little something in order that you might uh, uh, say, not say he's a sorry doctor and not come back whenever you really need him. Worry really is disobedience. Now the Bible says, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now Paul tells you there not to worry. And if you do, it's an act of disobedience on your part. We've got to do something about this worrying. It's not right. It's not pleasing to God. It's after you spiritually. It'll rob you of your spiritual strength. It'll discourage you. It'll get you to a place where you don't want to go to church or any place. If you worry, worry, worry. Word will affect the mind, the body, and the spirit. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Now if you can manage to enjoy what you're doing, if you can enjoy serving God and you should, if you can enjoy your home life and you should be able to do that, if you enjoy your job and you should be able to do that, then that's the best medicine that you can take. But if you become grieved and worried and you're not happy at home, you're not happy when you're at church, you're not happy on your job, you are headed for trouble, brother or sister. You are headed for trouble. Sooner or later, you'll wind up with a heart attack, high blood pressure or cancer or something uh, drastically wrong with you. Worry will damage your health as quick as anything. And God doesn't want you to worry. You need to keep that in mind. Now, as a dear woman one time, she's in very ill health and uh, kept losing weight and drugstore bill every month. And the, her husband, uh, he didn't like it and he is a little irritable about it. And, and they invited the preacher to come and have lunch with them one day. And he thought, well, now uh, the preacher's coming today and I'm going to slip away to his office and have a little talk with him about my wife. She's losing uh, uh, health and, uh, and uh, it's medicine every month and a medicine bill to pay and, and I just uh, got to get something done. So he went to the, doc, uh, the preacher's office and told the preacher about his wife's condition. And the preacher said to him, said, uh, well, said, uh, how long has it been since you've really taken your wife in your arms and hugged and kissed her real good and told her how pretty she was and you chose her from all the women in the world and you love her with all of your heart? Oh, he said, we quit that foolishness right after we got married. He said, yes. That's exactly what's wrong with your wife. Your wife is worried to death. She thinks you don't love her anymore and is grieving her heart and she's losing her health because she goes day in and day out thinking you don't care for her and you don't love her anymore. He said, why don't you go and buy her a box of candy and go home and take her in your arms and kiss her real good and tell her how pretty she is, how much you love her, how much you appreciate her. Well, he thought it over. He said, well, anything would be paying a a drugstore bill every month. So he went to the drugstore and he bought a box of candy. And he went home. His wife was very busy cooking chicken for the preacher. She was over at the stove and turning that chicken over and waiting for the preacher to come. He came walking in that big box of candy. And he handed it to her and he grabbed her and he kissed her. He said, honey, I bought you a box of candy. You're the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Sweetest woman in the world. I love you with all of my heart. I want you to know it. She began to scream. She said, all the times in the world for you to come home drunk is when the preachers come into our house. So you may have to kind of take it easy sometime. Now rush in on the situation. Might pay you to throw your hat in. And if it stays in, tiptoe in. If it comes out, take another walk. Might help you. Now in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. I will, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Now that's what God said. Keep your mind on the Lord. Quit worrying about things of this world. Now listen to this verse and this is a key verse. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. 
casting all you care upon him for he cares for you now if you don't have that verse underscored in your bible you ought to underscore it casting all a double l all your care upon him cast all your worries upon him casting all your care upon him for he cares for you now you ought to underscore that verse of scripture and memorize it roll that burden roll that worry off on jesus he'll be glad to have it that's what he said do there's a dear old colored lady many years ago lived to be 90 years old when asked why she lived so long she replied she said when i works i works hard when i sits i sits easy and when i worries i go to bed and go to sleep and so that's a pretty good policy why don't you try that sometime and see if it don't work now there's a man one time that prayed for a good crop of corn. He complained about not having a good crop of corn. He had his cattle to take care of and he just wanted a good crop of corn. And so there came a good season. His corn began to grow. All the ears filled out. He went out to check his field and all the ears completely filled out. What a wonderful crop of corn. He didn't like it. He started worrying. He said, now here, I have a field of corn all filled out and not one nubbin to feed my pigs on. And so that poor man I was going to find something to worry about regardless, wasn't it? And you're a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people that's going to scratch up something or find something to worry about. If it's nothing because you might worry because you don't worry. And that's worrying. And you need to be careful about that. Now the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith. The beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. You need to realize that. There's no farmer one time. He's out plowing his field. And he'd run over this rock and broke his plow several times and kept running over the rock, same old rock. Every time he'd plow that fur, he'd run over that rock and damage his plow. So one day he decided that he'd see if he could get that thing up and get it out of the way. So he went to dig it up. The thing was just laid on top of the ground. It wasn't even in the ground. He could just pick it up and move it out of the way a long time ago. But he thought it went way down into the ground. He's going to have to dig a well practically to get that rock up. It's right on top of the ground. Now some of those things you're worried about is right on top of the ground. And you think you're going to have to dig deep to get rid of them. But you won't. They're right on top of the ground. Just move them out of the way. Quit breaking your plows and go on and serve God. That's what God wants you to do. In Psalms chapter 55 verse 22 Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. You don't have a thing in the world to worry about. You're living in the greatest nation in the world. God's been good to you. And you need to cast all your care upon God because he cares for you. And cut out this worrying. Because what you're worrying about, probably not going to happen anyway. 90% of all the things you worry about never come to pass. And nothing you do about it anyway. So if there's nothing you can do about it, then why worry about it? A lot of people get themselves in bondage and, and in trouble um, by foolishness. Now a lot of people go out here and they run themselves in debt. A lot of young people do that, a lot of older people too. They'll go out and they'll buy and they'll buy and they'll get their credit cards and they'll take those cards and they'll buy and buy. Now you'll spend your money a lot faster if you have a credit card than you will if you have cash. I don't fool them things myself. I fear them worse than I do the measles. I don't fool credit cards, but if you want them, that's your business. And if they come in handy, all right. But what I don't like about the thing is when I have to pay them bills. And a lot of people go out around Christmas time or uh, vacation time, uh, birthday time, anniversary time, and man, they'll buy right and left in the east and west, north and south, up and down, and They'll load every credit card they got and think nothing about it. And, and then after Christmas or after vacation or after the anniversary of the birthday, here comes these bills in every month. And you'd be surprised at the interest piled on top of that. And it'd take you sometimes months and years to pay the thing off, pay a little dab off, pay um, about 25 cents on the interest and 5 cents on the, on the principal and and there it takes you years and years to pay the thing off. That's terrible. I'll tell you, I don't know about it. I just soon you throw a pistol in my face as one of these credit cards. Just don't bother me with them things. 
because I don't want to fool with them. I don't want to pay that high interest. Now, if you want to use them, use them. Now, a lot of these merchants listen to me today. They don't like what I'm saying. But I'm trying to help you. They're looking out for themselves, and I'm trying to look out for you. And you get that financial burden on you, and every dime you get, your paycheck comes. You have to pay every dime of it out for something. You've got no money left. Your wife needs some shoes. Your baby needs some clothes. You need to buy this. You need to purchase that. You don't have the money to do it. That will affect you spiritually. You'll come to God's house on Sunday in terrible shape. Why? Because you worn about those bills. You worn about what you have to pay out. And that will destroy you and that may wreck your home. There's a lot of husbands, wives separated right today because they didn't use good judgment, rammed themselves into debt, and then fussed and quarreled when the bills came due and fought over that until finally they had to separate. Listen, don't let your outflow be above your income. Let it be in practice with the income. Don't go out here and buy a lot of stuff that you know that's going to strain you that you'll not be able to pay for. You young people, you need a good credit reference, and don't go out here and buy stuff on the credit that you can't pay for. A man, a woman that buys something and promises to pay for it and don't do it, they're a thief and a liar. They told the man they'd pay for it and let them have it, and they lied, and they stole it. They're a thief and a liar and a robber. I don't care if they're church members, if they care if they're saved or whatnot. If you don't pay what's yours and you promise to pay your bills, you're a thief and a liar and a robber. Now, you won't like that. I believe in people paying their just and honest debts and paying their bills. Now, you may say, preacher, we get into tight sometimes. Well, straighten that out with your debt. If he's got the sense at all, he'll go along with you and bear with you and get it later rather than not get it all. All you got to do is go sit down and say, now, listen, sir, I bit off more than I can chew and it's about choking me to death. I wonder if you can help me out here. Uh, I'll pay you so much now and, and it's going to take me the long to get this bill off. And if he's a wise man, he'll go along with you because he'd rather get a little at a time and you go ahead and deadbeat and not pay him anything, you owe him and not pay him anything. And he'll go along with you. See, you don't have to beat your bills. You can go sit out and talk to your debtor and get that thing squared away that you'll have a good conscience and it won't affect you spiritually. Now, if you go around and steal and rob and beat your debts, won't pay your bills, how can you expect to be a spiritual Christian? You can't. You can't. You're a carnal you're a carnal and a church member. And you need to realize that. And those things will wreck you and cause you to worry. Now cut out some of that worrying. And you won't have to run to the doctor's office every week and the drugstore every day. Cut out some of that. Well, quit worrying. Cast your care upon the Lord. And quit worrying about these things. And you find you're in better shape than you thought you were. It's a trick of the devil to palm up on you. Something to cause you to worry about. Kick it off. Billy Sunday said he didn't worry about anything anymore than he could kick off one big kick. And when he went to bed, he went to sleep. Oh, you say, preacher, don't you ever worry about it? I told you in the beginning, sometimes I worry. I wish I didn't. I'm trying to get victory over it. I'm, uh, God's helping me not to worry about some things that I used to worry about. And it's a sin to worry. And I'm asking God to help me not commit that sin. And if you're a Christian, you ought to do likewise. Do right, serve God, and quit that word. Be careful about what you buy, and quit trying to keep up with the Joneses. Some people are going to keep up with the Joneses. I don't care if they have to go in debt. If they only knew what the Joneses owed, they wouldn't be so anxious to keep up with them. You do your own business, run your own business, take care of your own business, and let the Joneses do likewise. No need you say, well, the Joneses, they got a new car. We're going to get us one now. The Joneses, they got them a boat. We're going to get us one. The Joneses got them a new living room. So we're going to get us one. That's foolish. That's foolish. That'll run you in debt and cause you to worry just trying to keep up with them. And they may never get this paid for. They may lose every bit of it. So you run your business and what you got in your house. And then God will help you and bless you. And don't bite off more than you can chew. Be sure what you buy, you can pay for. Now you be sure you can meet your obligation. If you don't do it, then, beloved, you're in trouble as certain as I'm speaking to you today. And if you can't meet your obligation, have an understanding. Have an understanding with the person you owe. That's the way to do it. And you can stay in tune with God and the old wagon will run along smoothly if you keep it greased in that manner. I can mention some in the Bible that word about some things. Jacob word about Benjamin going to Egypt. 
He said these things against me, but he was wrong. We find the old psalmist, man that wrote the Psalm 73, he didn't like it because the weak had prospered and he didn't, went to the house of God. God explained that to him. Uh, Simon Peter worried about Jesus going to the cross. Jesus said, get behind me, Simon. Get behind me, Satan, brother. He don't been as worried about that. Simon Peter worried about what John is going to do in John chapter 21. Jesus said, Simon, it doesn't matter what he's going to do. You look after Simon and let John do what I want him to do. He is worried about John. The church at Thessalonica worried about the loved ones that they had buried. Wondered whether or not they coming out of the grave or already come out of the grave. Paul wrote to him and Paul said, sorrow not. Sorry not these others which have no hope. Paul said, don't you worry about your love when it's going to be with God. Sorry not is those that have no hope. You don't have to worry about that. And a lot of people worry, 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 worry. When it's needless, there's no need of you doing it. So stop that worry. And right now, confess the sin and kick up your heels and go and serve God and let her rip. And God will bless you and help you as you sojourn. Thank you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Father in heaven, I pray that you'll take the message and use it today. Help thy children to roll all their worries over on you. That's what you tell us to do, Father. No need of us worrying about different things. Nothing we do about it, but turn it over to thee. And laugh and go on and enjoy life and serve thee faithfully. And our God, I pray that many of your precious children right now will get rid of that worrying that they might be more spiritual to the glory of God and use common sense in everyday walk of life and not bite off more than they can chew or obligate themselves wherein they can't meet their obligation. Bless thy people. God, we know there's many of them in ill health today and headed for the graveyard because they've worried themselves in that condition. God, it's a sin to worry and help us not to worry. You tell us not to do it. We pray you'll help us in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, Joan's going to play her couple of stanzas as she plays. If there's somebody here God is speaking to, you'll need to come down here for salvation. Come back to God or join the church, or rededication or whatever. Would you come while we wait? given the message God laid on my heart and now God speaks to you to respond to it you do it <laughs> 